down. Yeah, is that better? Yeah, that's a little better actually. Alright, so more. So if we move this over here so we can see it better. So you should be seeing this. You've been seeing this the whole time. Dismantle and disband the police. They want to go paragraph by paragraph. Yeah, we'll do that. Sorry, you want to start? You want to start? I'll start. Alright. For those calling to dismantle and disband police departments like the Minneapolis City Council are not going far enough. The nationwide calls to defund police departments are even more lame. Both the dismantle and the defund causes have vague ideas of diverting money from police towards better community education and training programs to end the poverty, causing violence and crime. The story the story? His story already proves those ideas won't work. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, you can change it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I like that more. There we go. So when we go, when we're reading, do we want to have a discussion on like each paragraph? I think it would be more so just if you like read or see something that you like. That you want to talk about. Yeah, that you want to talk about it. You can just kind of like talk about it after the paragraph is done before you start talking, uh, or something. Um, but yeah, as it is now, like so, if there was something you thought that was cool, then we could talk about it. If not. I'll just start to read. Alright, so... <coughs> I wasn't really paying attention there, I was trying to... Right. It, yeah. Um, first thing is... What is the point of this? Would it be... With all the Black Lives Matter movement going on? In that whole situation? Well, yeah, that would be... I would assume the biggest thing. Like, his teaching tonight. This was... A long time ago, actually. This was 6 or 11. Yeah. yeah. So... I would assume actually he was writing this blog and he probably got a lot like from the teaching he did tonight. Uh, if you haven't heard it, it should be available on YouTube. It's pretty good, yeah, it's on YouTube. Um yeah, what's that for? Freedom Fellowship. Yeah, you know, every time uh, I look up Freedom Fellowship I can't find it. It does take some working to get to, but uh, yeah, I would assume he's writing this because of, like, all the things going on with COVID and the Black Lives Matter movement and things like that. It's actually really good to talk about because this is real things and I want to see if we get shut down. Too. Oh, that's a good point. From, yeah, from, like, the Atlas perspective. But with that, I'm going to try and read the next paragraph. Attempts to politically engineer social justice and end poverty were pursued exhaustively from every direction spending hundreds of billions of dollars, beginning with President Johnson's Great Society campaign in the 1960s. What's changed since then? According to all the research and disparity between rich and poor kept growing and continues, Johnson's urban renewal program has produced massive, rat-infested tenement slums, now called projects, where poor, mostly non-whites, are shelved. You know... Keto is his dramatic. He is, but like it's a, it's 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 not. No, it's good. It's a good dramatic. But like it's not dramatic. It's a it's a good point. Yeah. He he brings out like a lot of people think he's dramatic because it's like it seems over the top, but I think really what he's doing is like reality. bringing yeah he's bringing like the the uncomfortable reality to us as we are like reading his things or he's in a teach. I actually loved that yeah. about his teaching tonight, is I was like what is this man saying? Like, is he saved? Yeah. Like, for a second, I, no, like, literally for a second, I questioned his salvation, and I was like, this is, that's actually a great way to teach. I want to implement that in my teaching. Like, I want to fight the, it's called the, uh, what's it called? The antithesis. It's the opposite of your thesis statement, which is usually, like, God is good, so this thing can happen. But with a really good antithesis, you're like fighting the argument against your thesis before it's even brought up. And he did such a good job at that where I was like, is this like, is his sickness making him question God? And like, is he saying these things? I thought it was really cool, actually. But then like, because it, it gives you that kind of an uncomfortable feeling to where if you're a Christian, you're listening, especially because he's our main pastor. You're like, what is this guy saying? Like, yeah. what is he talking about? But... 
if you uh, like are someone who's not saved, you're like, yeah, I like what this man's saying, and it makes a lot of sense to me. But then he comes down with a really hard, like, uh, it's not even an argument at first, it's just a statement of like, no, this isn't true. And like, for as a Christian listener, you're like, praise God, first of all, that I'm not being led astray. But also like, oh, now what's he going to say? And it, it, it leads into this kind of um, really cool way of just uh, developing your thesis more and being able to explain it more. I think it's really cool. But for the non-Christian listener, it's like, oh, well, he already has their attention because he, they were agreeing with what he was saying. And then he comes back with this. And if you were agreeing with what he's saying, then you want to continue to listen and be like, okay, well, he just said that. Why is he switching now? And yeah, I think that's really cool. I just kind of talked for a long time. but No, yeah, I think typically, like in general, agriculture in, in its entirety is like really desensitized uh, to truth and to reality. And we like to devote our attention to things that are more comfortable. And we're really used to comfortable. So when mm-hmm. we hear things like this, it's like, wow, why are you being such a fucking baby right now? Yeah. It's not that serious, but it actually is. Like, it's really serious. It always is. And the reality that he's bringing to the light is actually really cool. And he's always really good at that. Yeah. It's true. I'm just going to throw it in the face because this is what is actually happening. Yeah. And it's helpful. It's cool. All right. Racism and resentment keep festering and economic inequalities keep growing in the USA, even though the US government has spent more money and employed more social welfare programs than any other nation on earth or in history. Yet protests have erupted in England, France, Spain, Australia, and others against American racial inequalities. Even the dictators in China and Iran joined the outcry. Wow. Despite their own wretched behaviors against ethnic ethnic minorities. <laughs> ask the Irish about England's racist record. Or ask the Australian Aborigines about Australia's racism. The hypocrisy is outstanding. 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 <laughs> outstanding. <laughs> China, of course, should tutor the USA on how to treat ethnic minorities. Wow. My yeah, no, I is, know, yeah, yeah. My fucking math is not working doing what I want to do. Ethnic minorities. Yeah. I think, okay, so I know what I just said in the paragraph before about how he's not dramatic. <laughs> but I think this is a actually a really good example of he's really good at this. Of, I mean, it, it really is bringing it back to kind of what I was saying before, where it's like, shoving the truth in our face because China could teach us how to treat ethnic minorities Um, but that's just because everyone I think that's kind of the point he's getting at is everyone is literally shit at trying to love people like the only person who can effectively love other people is Jesus Christ and the only way that we can effectively love people is through him Yes, I mean, that whole paragraph is really interesting, because, like, even the dictators in China and Iran joined the outcry despite their own rich behaviors. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's pretty that's, fucked that's up. That's intense, yeah. Yeah, like, we commonly, like, are like, wow, they treat their people like shit. Yeah, we're like, fuck like, Iran. Like, not even, like, real people, like, fucking aliens, like, they don't even matter, like, they're not human. But they joined the outcry that's going on in America, how we're treating people. That's insane. Yeah, I would, like, because especially in Iran, like, just the, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. I'd be, I don't even know if I'd be surprised if it was, like, North Korea joined the outcries. That, that, like, I would see that, that and I'd be like, oh, yeah, shit. that would really make America be like, wow, we have to think about this. All right. Anyway, is Alex still watching? I don't know. Oh my god. Oh wow. Okay, sorry, Alex. Uh, what Ryan did to the way the video is viewed. Yeah, thank you. What'd you, what'd you do? Uh, with being able to see the blog here. Oh yeah, nice. 
Uh, I used to get really uncomfortable when Keith would act and talk like that, but it makes total sense. It grabs attention from, from the non-believers so that they actually listen to the teacher and relate to That's true. That's a, a really big reason about why I like that he does that. Uh, it is actually really cool. Yeah, that's what I just said. Uh, I love how much he isn't afraid to speak the truth of the world to them. Truth yeah. of the world. I'm assuming he meant the word. Uh, to the world because, like Nate said, he ignore, he ignore, really? we ignore it and are desensitized to what happened in the world when it isn't right in front of us. That's true. And that's a really big thing, and I think it is really uh, important to be able to see that. And even now, like, as everything is going on, and it's like right in our faces, we still ignore it, and we, still, we, we can go back to our daily lives, and it doesn't affect us personally. Like pretty That's much, like yeah. we can literally just fucking especially in America. Yeah. yeah, we can ignore everything. We can yeah. shut everything out, and nothing matters because we're Americans. We don't care. Yeah. We just fucking do our own thing, and that's that's all right. It's like uh, viewing the news and seeing like all of these school shootings are going on or something like that. And when you're watching it, you're getting depressed because you're like seeing actually the um, what's it called? <clears throat> what's it called? The depravity of the world. Yes. Uh, and being able to actually see that throughout the day and focusing on that is shit. It, it feels like shit because you're seeing just exactly how bad the just everything is and you're seeing it for what it really is. And I've actually heard a lot of people, uh, I've actually had my mom, I talked to my mom about this with uh, coronavirus. She was like keeping up on the news about it and she was like, I couldn't do it anymore. It just made me so sad seeing all the deaths and things like that. And we can do that. We can just stop watching the news or stop viewing the things that make us sad. And I think that's good to an extent. Like, we need to know what's happening and be thinking about it, but then be counteracting the things that are happening and, like, people's fears and the trials that they're going through and bring them a piece, like, again, keep us talking about tonight, uh, and be able to bring that to them and be like, yes, but here's Jesus, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think we too easily just like run away from the reality. Like we'll look at it for a minute and we'll be like, this has, this is uncomfortable. I'm not going to look at it. Yeah. And we just have the privilege to do that. Yeah. And that's what a lot of our privilege comes back to is like, we don't have to deal with it. So why? Yeah. Why would we? And that's, that's just kind of how our culture works, really. That's true. It's kind of fucked up. But it's just, no, that's just what it is. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well, we've read three paragraphs. Yep. So I'm going to read. Go ahead. <laughs> Ironically, the national outrage against police brutality and the demands of the Black Lives Matter movement has created more violence and deeper pol yeah, yeah, polarization. Yeah. <laughs> New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees said his family is getting death threats after he said, I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of America. Uh, uh. Five police have been killed and others seriously wounded. Molotov cocktails were thrown in Minneapolis, then in a police car by a New York City lawyer who was Princeton educated. She was not a typical street thug. Countless protesters have been brutalized by the police. It's hard to track all of the violence and casualties stemming from the George Floyd's cruel death. Alright, so this is pretty directly related to George Floyd. Mm -hmm. So the thing here that I thought about while I was reading is he brings up both sides. Yeah. He's not he's he's not choosing sides essentially. He's well he is choosing sides. He's choosing the side of peace and the side of Christ and it's really cool because he's like people saying that anybody who disrespects the flag, like, I'm never going to agree with that. And then he also goes to the side of, like, everybody is suffering because of what's going on. Like, because there is no peace, because people are being destroyed and hateful towards one another, this affects everybody. Like, it's not just a Black Lives Matter movement. Well, it definitely is, because, like, they need that kind of equality and as like it says in Galatians like we are all equal anyway 
but it kind of he goes on with that and talks about uh, just both sides essentially. Is just what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. And uh, going back to the last paragraph, it's kind of funny because we like to ignore the reality, but also in that ignorance, that's not the right word. In that ignoring, it's already been defined. Dang. In that ignoring, <laughs> um, we look at people who are actually taking action, like people who protest. Yeah. And we're like, holy shit, they're radicals, fucking stop. And like, a big portion of the culture starts to make fun of people who are actually taking action against it. Yeah. They're like, wow, this is bad, so I'm going to act on it, I'm going to go protest. And that's like a big thing that America has that's really cool that we can do, like freely. But people are making fun of it and trying to like fucking counteract protesting and counteract justice in that own sense. Which is really interesting to me. Yeah. I haven't changed my accent. Uh, uh, yeah, mine, mine's still scratchy. A little bit, but I definitely, when reading and talking, like it, it just kind of smoothed itself out. Alright, the need for radical change, Nathan. Would you like to read? Yeah, go says in John, First John five nineteen, the whole system lies in the power of the evil one, which means the problem really is systematic, systemic, not systematic. Contrary to Attorney General Barr's recent statement denying it, yes, there is systemic evil in police departments, in governments, in armies, and all the ingenious systems of humankind wielding power throughout history. Pervasive corruption and evil explain why the whole system is passing away along with its lusts. God says in First John 2.17, So too, systemic failure is inherently built into all civilizations of humankind, great or small. All civilizations collapse, by necessity, spectacularly and violently. It would be naive and ignorant to think the USA could produce a stable civilization that defies the course of human history. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Wait, All right. <laughs> All right. Ah, <laughs> uh, I gotta make shit. Okay. How could we be so arrogant? A human. Yes. You're a narcissist. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Dismantle and disband is merely the beginning of God's solution. Why? <laughs> and it will happen. Why did he use bold for... <laughs> He's dying. <laughs> Give him some oh, grace. Me too. Uh, and it will happen. It is a fact as certain as the historical fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the same one who resurrected from the grave... Alex, we heard you laugh. Uh, from the grave also promised that he will dismantle and disband the whole system, and soon. But he said that job belongs to him, not us. The timing is determined by our Heavenly Father, not us. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father alone. Jesus said in Matthew twenty four thirty six. But he guaranteed it will happen and must happen. Because he said in verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will not pass away. That's beautiful. Jesus will bring peace. He will. I'm so excited for that time. It's like literally hard to imagine sometimes. I know. It is. It's like... Especially seeing like all the violence and shit. And like really looking at it. Yeah. But when you really look at it, that's when you can actually realize that God is going to bring peace. Jesus is going to come back. And you'll be like, dude, I got this good shit for you. All right, let me give it to you. And you'll be like, all right. I like the sound of that. I think we might only be afraid to hear. We'll yeah. have to do the other one on a different yeah. podcast. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is too long already. Yes. Yeah, all right, go ahead. How can you see the, uh, where's the time? The 
this is lifetime, let's see if I can time. Alright, we were live a little bit before I hit the record button. Alright. The greatest wrongs in church history occurred when Christians replaced Jesus' words with different marchings or marching orders from human political sources. Jesus promised repeatedly he will establish the kingdom of God in a spectacular, authoritative manner, in his way, not our way. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. He said in Matthew 24, 27. Jesus promised spectacular change. Alright. Someone will mention this. This is really cool. Uh, this kind of goes along in the teaching I did over the weekend. Maybe <laughs> next weekend. Uh, but where it talks about the greatest, like essentially the first sentence, uh, the greatest wrongs in church history occurred when Christian replaced Jesus with different marching orders from human political sources. So, just the the fact that this was going along the idea of I don't know if you remember or not, but I was talking about how we like to emasculate Jesus, we like to domesticate him, uh, and kind of sell him off as like this. Goody guy, if you accept him in your life, your life's going to be great, and it's going to be full of sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns, and you're going to have an awesome time, get everything you ever want, so he's going to bring you money, fame, success, whatever you're looking for. Uh, and this is, I think, really a big Christian problem that we have. Um, yeah, we're called to be persecuted. We're called to go through that. Yeah, we're called to suffer for him, which we're trying to avoid that, I think, in a lot of ways. Suffer not only for him, but for everyone. Yeah. We're just called to suffer. Yeah, well, we're called to be servants. We're called to be servants. We're supposed to suffer. No, we are supposed to suffer for him because we shouldn't be suffering from our own stupidity. Right. Which we do a lot. You know. Yep. You're an expert. I am. Uh, <laughs> but is it's so hard, I feel like, in a lot of different aspects of life to just be real with people and be like, yeah, so I worship a guy who went to jail and was cr killed as a criminal. Um, and like, if you said that like that, a lot of people would be like, what the hell is wrong with you? And you'd be like, oh, I'm Christian. Duh. And that's, that's, that's a shock. Like it's weird. And it's like, we're called to do what? Like we're called to suffer for people. Why would I want to do that? Why on earth would I want to do that? But it's, a blessing to be able to do that and it's really cool to put ourselves aside and be like you know what my rights don't matter I'm going to put those aside to love you my wants my desires my lusts whatever lust of the eyes flesh and the boastful pride of life all of these things don't really matter the only thing that matters is the Lord Jesus and I'm going to do what I can to love and serve him and to love and serve his people and I think that is really cool, but also really hard. Because a lot of times when we go about that, we have this conviction, right? We have this, yeah, of course I want to do that. But a lot of times we get scared in the moment or uh, something happens and we're like, uh, I don't know, let me take a back. Maybe, wow. Let me take a step back from that uh, and kind of waver a little bit. In actually proclaiming the truth and what's going on, even flash fingers, yeah. and <laughs> it is just really hard to be able to do that. And I definitely don't have it down by any stretch of the means, but it's worth it. I'm trying. It's hard. I wish I could be a better ambassador for Christ. For sure. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> it sucks. I hate it. Ryan came over. That was, that was cool. Oh, did No, I was sure the other day. Oh, yeah, 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 that was cool. Yeah. That was good. Nice. And he actually texted me after that. We oh, texted nice. him back and forth for a little cool. bit. So. Nice. Probably really enjoyed the time he spent with you. I think he did. I think it was um, a little awkward at first. Probably, yeah. Just because like, we were up here and we were saying much. We were just, each just kind of working on our own thing, which... Maybe it wasn't actually awkward for me. I felt fine because I was like, fuck, I gotta get my physics time. Right, right, yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah, but I don't know if he felt awkward or not. I just kept kind of looking back and he was like standing on his phone right there. But I think he might have just been thinking, actually. He does it a lot. Now that I think about it, yeah. 
but I helped him with some weird problem that we still couldn't figure out. Uh, this is a long one. Alright, we're ready. You ready? Here we go. Unfortunately. It's me reading. Wait. No. Yep. Yep. That's true. Yep. What if I read it? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, Christians keep trying to finish the job they think Jesus, Jesus failed to do. Yep. So Christians get stuck, sucked into establishing the justice, justice yeah. and righteousness of God's kingdom on earth themselves. Most well, part of life. Uh, God's kingdom without Jesus leading it. Isn't that silly? Yeah. European <laughs> history is rancid with European powers taking turns claiming to host God's kingdom on earth. Christians kept joining political traps. All those efforts were political, not spiritual. So they produced disaster and useless bloodshed. They never established anything resembling God's kingdom on earth. First, the Romans tricked Christians, then the Byzantine Empire, then Charlemagne's new Holy Roman Emperor, uh, Empire. Sorry. It's pronounced Champagne. It's not. Then King Henry VIII's Anglican Empire. Did you fucking pass high school? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm in college. <laughs> Uh, and other smaller Protestant governments, all taking turns, all claiming to host God's kingdom on earth, <laughs> all of them trapping naive Christians with empty promises of building God's kingdom. Christians were killed. Christians... Did you pass high school? <laughs> barely. Christians were killing Christians over which version of God's kingdom gets to rule the earth. Now you got it in my fucking head. Gets to rule the earth. Delusions of grandeur. I bet you didn't even know half those words. Fuck you! <laughs> yeah, I think... Let's see where we at. We're almost at 50 minutes. Um, yeah, is there good. anything you want to say about this real quick? Not at all. Yeah, I, I, think, like I, th yeah, I think you wrapped it up pretty well. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for tonight. Um, I thank you very much for watching and for subscribing. I thank you very much for that. Um, and... Uh, if you would like to hear more, see more uh, of Keith's um, blogs, I really highly recommend. We might finish this one next week. Um, I'm not sure, but I highly suggest reading it on your own if you haven't yet had the chance. If you could read it and then maybe we'll read it next time and you can see how your ideas and what you were thinking matches up with ours. Maybe there's something you can comment. It's really helpful. Yeah. It's true. It is really cool to think about and read about it ahead. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, smash share it with your friends, and button, hit, 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 hit the... Just give a little gentle tap to the like button too, nice. if you wouldn't mind. Smash it. Thank you so much for watching, smash. and we will see you next time. Fucking cut it. Good night <laughs> and good night. <laughs>